Well, I didn't bring you along for the first part of this video because I didn't think it would get to this extreme, but I have a PV architectural acoustics amplifier right here. I've got it kind of torn apart already. This one is a UMA 150T2, not to be confused with the UMA 150 amplifier that they have. Very similar schematic wise. But so what I've got right now is I've got a blown 5 amp fuse right here and I've got a shorted output transistor but I have sourced a complete set of output transistors. We'll test a couple of the other associated components just to make sure that they're okay and we'll do a couple of the tests make sure the unit's going to function once again put it all back together and we'll see how it goes. Alright so we'll go ahead and just zip the leads off here There we go, so I have the drivers and the outputs completely unsoldered. Now we just have to remove the screws from the output transistors and then remove the nuts because they've soldered the screws on the driver transistor heat sinks. So we just have to pull the nuts off the driver transistors right here and we should be good to go. Get these babies out. So now these transistors are 704. 74140 and 74884140. So I'm just going to make a note here. 8, 8, 7, and 7. So now I sourced some replacement transistors from Dalbani. These are original PV output transistors. 704-74140s and 704-84140s. So we're going to replace the four output transistors. And I sourced the driver transistors from Atlas Industrial Services Incorporated in Georgia. I couldn't get the original PV transistors, but I did come up with some NTE replacements. 373 and 374 New Tone Electronics. Not even sure if they're still in business or not, but these are probably new old stock NPN and PMP driver transistors to replace this driver and this driver. So we'll go ahead and put them all in and see what happens. So I have the driver transistors out and I thought I would just test them to verify if they're good or not. So the PMP tests good with a gain of 144 and a voltage drop of 0.619 volts, 619 millivolts. So that one tests okay. So here is the other driver transistor. It tests good as well. I thought one of these driver transistors was bad, but maybe it's just because the output transistor was shorted. Gain of 122, forward voltage drop of 0 0.630 volts or 630 millivolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse these drivers just because they test absolutely fine. All right, so I have the output transistors out. Let's test them out of circuit. That one tests okay. So we'll just put a mark on that, that that one is actually okay. Beta gain of 103, forward voltage of 0.556 volts. Now we'll test this guy. That one actually tests okay as well. Beta 103 again, 0.553 volts drop. Test this last one. That one is shorted one to three, so the yellow is shorted to the red, so collector is shorted to emitter on that one. 0.59 ohms, that guy is bad. Put an X on that one. Test this last one. So that one has a beta of 39 and a forward voltage drop of 0.567 volts. So next, we'll go ahead and test the new ones. Beta 78, 548 millivolts drop. And we'll test the next one. Beta 78, 551 millivolts. So those were the PMPs. These are the NPN transistors. Let's test those. Once again, low gain, 18, with the forward voltage of 0 0.640. Wow, beta of six, that one's very low. Uh, hopefully these won't be pushed to the limit, but nevertheless, that's all I have. We'll go ahead and put them in. So I'm gonna add some fresh heat sink compound to the insulators. Once you get this stuff on your fingers, it's nearly impossible to ever get off again. 
So we'll do that to all four transistors and remount them on the chassis. All right, so we have the four new output transistors installed. So next, we'll go ahead and solder them up, do a couple quick ohmmeter checks, fire this baby up and see what happens. So I have the voltmeter in the diode range right now, and we're just going to do a diode junction check. So we'll go from the base. Why are we getting such a low voltage base to emitter? Well, it's the same on both both channels. But we don't have a shorted collector emitter. So let's look at the schematic and see if we can find out why we're getting such a low base to emitter. So I've tested all the driver components, but I did find this one diode right here that tested bad, 0 0.28, 0 0.028 voltage drop across it. But then I noticed if I went to ohms, it was 33 ohms and it's actually in parallel with this 33 ohm resistor. And so I looked at the schematic diagram and it's this one right here. It has a 33 ohm resistor in parallel to it. Everything else tests great in this circuit. I've tested all the driver transistors, all the output transistors. Everything tests good. So I'm, I'm really only interested in this area of the circuitry right here, which is the outputs and the drivers. These are the pre-driver transistors. I tested those off cameras. I tested the 100 ohm flame proof resistors, which are basically the emitter resistors. If there's a problem, one of those would burn up. They all test absolutely perfectly fine. Okay, so I have my MP3 player connected to the number one audio input. Go ahead and hit play. There's the number one input right here. Master volume is up at about halfway. Let's turn it down to about a quarter. So let's take a look at our Syncor PR57 power monitor. working absolutely perfectly. So I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the PV UMA 150T Series 2. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation to my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash NorCal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.